Passion Sunday in Lent that we are going to be conducting. And the epistle for this uh, Passion Sunday this year, taken from St. Paul's out of the Hebrews, chapter 9. Brethren, when Christ appeared as high priest of the good things to come, he entered once for all through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands that is not of this creation, nor again by virtue of the blood of goats and of calves, but by the virtue of his own blood into the holies, having obtained eternal redemption. For the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkled ashes of a heifer, sanctify the unclean unto the cleansing of the flesh. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the Holy Ghost offered himself unblemished unto God, Cleanse your conscience from dead works who serve the living God. This is why he is mediator of a new covenant, that whereas a death has taken place with redemption from the transgressions transgressions committed under the former covenant, they who have been called may receive eternal inheritance according to the promise in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in the Gospel. Say that according to St. John chapter 8. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds of the, of, of the Jews, Which of you will convict me of sin? If I speak to you the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear is that you are not of God. The Jews, therefore, in answer said to him, Are we not right in saying that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil. But I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and who judges. And many men I say to you, if anyone keep my word, he shall never taste to see death. And Jesus therefore said, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, if anyone keep my word, he shall never taste death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead. Whom dost thou make thyself? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say that he is your God. Now you do not know him, but I know him. And if I say that I do not know him, I will be like unto you a liar. But I know him, and I keep his word. Abraham your father rejoiced that he was to see my day. He saw it and was glad. Jews therefore said to him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Before Abraham came to be, I am. And therefore took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out from the temple. Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. Now entering the sacred season of Passion Tide, these last two weeks of Holy Week, and that we're uh, preparing for the greatest moment, the most important and most decisive moment in history, which was the moment that our Lord Jesus Christ gave up the ghost on Good Friday at 3 p.m. And we are now only a short period from then, from that time. And so, St. Gregory the Great says, consider the great question. And the great question is actually brought up by our Lord in the Gospel, that if I speak the truth, then why don't you hear my voice? Our Lord Jesus Christ would say a, a few days later, when speaking to Pilate, I am the truth. Pilate would ask, what is truth? And he was speaking to the truth. The night before, on Holy Thursday, he would tell his apostles that he is the truth. So now is the time of the moment of truth. We have to give the expression in our own English language, it is the moment of truth. And what does it mean when we say it's the moment of truth? When the moment of truth comes, that is the moment when there is a great test. And there is a great temptation. And there is a great attack to get us to walk away from the truth. To turn away from the truth. To turn to the lie. And in the moment of truth, it is decided who shall be on the right side of our Lord and stand with the truth 
And who shall be on the left side and turn away from it? The Lord Jesus Christ then gives a warning to St. Gregory the Great in, the, in his sermon today. Our Lord gives a warning. And it is the most serious warning in the beginning of the Gospel in his argument with the Jews, a very long argument, but towards the end of the Gospel of St. John chapter 8, and is getting up to the point where they are finally going to be fed up with him, and they are going to try to stone him to death. But he will hide himself and go out from the midst of them. They will not be able to harm him because his hour has not yet come. We're at the end of this argument, and the Jews are getting more and more angry. And our Lord is getting more and more serious. Now, 46 verses in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 8, we finally arrive. Our Lord has called him a devil. He has said, you are of the devil. You are of your father, the devil. And they say, they, they say that, and then at that time, Jesus continues the conversation, which of you can convict me of sin? If I speak to you the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear is that you are not of God. And St. Gregory the Great, in his commentary on these words, he says, this is a great time for us, this Passion Time. This is a great question. Am I of God? Am I ex Deo? Am I out of God? The word ex is used in Latin. That is, do we, does everything we do, does everything we think, does every movement of our heart, is it ex Deo? Does it proceed out from God? And so that God is on the inside, and then what I do comes out from God. Everything comes out from God. And that is the great question. Are we of God? You do not do the works of God because you are not of God. The reason why you do not hear is that you are not of God. And then St. Gregory goes through a list of the type of souls that are not of God. And they do not hear. It is of the ears that we see whether we are of God or not. As you remember what St. John or St. Paul would say to the Romans, Fides ex auditu. The faith comes by hearing. Hence we find the attack of the hearing is so important. In Vietnam, the communists in the 1960s, when they ran across a catechism class, and they saw the catechism teacher was teaching the children about our Lord Jesus Christ, and teaching the Ten Commandments, and teaching this Holy Catholic Catechism, they took sticks, and they drove sticks into the ears of all the children that were listening to the Catechism, and they made them deaf for the rest of their lives. They then cut off the tongues. One of these men, who used to bring Holy Communion to, in Australia, every time we go to Australia, his tongue had been cut out. For him, they cut out his tongue, and they also bunched in his ears, because he was at the catechism class, and he also was listening to the Word of God. And he used to bring him Holy Communion in Australia. He was filled with great happiness. Never saw him one moment sad, because his tongue was cut out, because he spoke the truth and taught the catechism. His ears were smashed, and he was never able to hear for the rest of his life, because the last thing he heard was the teaching of God. And it was in his heart. And he died only a couple of years ago. His ears were smashed out, his tongue was cut off in the 1960s. He still went on to live a happy and full life in Christ. And he died a happy death with his sacraments. Do we come ex Deo or not? St. Yes. Gregory the Great says, this is the great question. Am I ex Deo? Am I coming out from God? And our Lord Jesus Christ, at the end of this long argument, very long argument with the Jews, he says to them, you do not hear my words. I speak the truth, but you do not hear them. I have proven that what I say is right. I have proven that what I do is of God. I have proven that you should listen to me by my miracles, by my words, by my life. And finally, let me ask you, which of you can convict me of sin? None of you can convict me of sin. And yet you still will not hear my words. Here is the reason why. Because you are not of God. There are many ways to not be of God, says St. Gregory the Great, the Holy Pope in the year 600. <coughs> 
First of all, there are those who do not hear with their ears. They will not even hear with their bodily ears. They are likened to the Jews who were there when Stephen, St. Stephen, when he spoke and said, I see the heavens opened. Notice how when St. Stephen, the first martyr, when he argued with the Jews, they argued back. But when it became the end of the argument, and St. Stephen saw the heavens opened, and he saw the glory and the beauty of God, he had gotten finally to the essential thing. And the essential thing is God and his beauty, God and his truth, God in his most magnificent wonderfulness that made all things. He looked up to heaven and he said, I see the heavens opened. And I see God, I see our Lord Jesus Christ coming in great majesty, and he was filled with light, and he was filled with beauty. And he spoke these words, and what did the Jews do? They stopped up their ears, and they screamed with a loud voice, so that they would not hear what he had to say. And this is the first stopping of the ears, says St. Gregory the Great. There are so many souls that stop their ears in the bodily ears, for they hate God so much. And remember this. Many a soul will tell you. I turned against God when my son died. I turned against God when my business collapsed. I turned against God when I got cancer. I turned against God when something terrible happened in my life. I turned against God because of evil in the world. Everyone that says this is a liar. And as our Lord Jesus Christ said, you do not hear the words of God, not because something bad happened in your life, but because you are a liar, and you are a he who is the father of lies. Right before the gospel today, chapter verse 46, is where the chapter picks up. Just a few verses before, what does our Lord Jesus Christ say? You are a liar, and you are of him who is the father of lies. It's Jesus Christ who calls the devil the father of lies, and all liars are of him who is the father thereof. And they are liars. Look, what is it that they don't like? They do not like the beauty of God. It is interesting how St. Augustine says it. He says, this is the true secret sin. Oftentimes we refer to the sins of the flesh as secret sins. Because we try to hide them. But the true secret sin is the sin of envy. By which we hate to see good in another that is above us. Because we think we are the greatest thing that ever happened. And the greatest good is in God. And there are souls that consider themselves to be God. This is what, this is what the sin of pride is. And we all have pride in us. And these souls cannot tolerate to hear the truth of God. They cannot tolerate to see the beauty of God. They cannot tolerate to see the divine ways. They can't stand it. And therefore they stop up their ears on the outside. And there are countless souls like this everywhere in the world. They stop up their bodily ears. Therefore, they are not of God. And why do they not do it? Because they are not of God. They cannot stand the goodness of God. Like those Jews, and one of them was Saul of Tarsus, who went and took our Lord St. Stephen, and they stoned him to death. And they were filled with hatred of his goodness. Hatred of his truth. And here we must understand the enemies of the church. Do not hate the church because the church has robbers and, and thieves and impure and murderers and every type of wickedness in it. They have no problem with that since that's all the world has. They hate the church because the church is of God. They can't stand beautiful Gothic cathedrals because they speak of God. They can't stand the priesthood because it reminds of God. They can't stand the cassock because it refers to God. They can't stand the sign of the cross because it leads us to God. They hate anything that leads to God. And these are the first type, and they are a legion and increasing throughout the entire world. They stop up their bodily ears. And St. Gary the Great says then there is a second type. These type hear with their bodily ears. They love to hear the truth. They like to hear it. And they believe it, and they cry, and they weep for a time. But after a brief period of weeping, and after a short time of fervor, they return back to their vomit. They return back to their sin. They're only uh, joyful of God, and they hear the beautiful words for a really short time. And then they return to their sin. 
This is a great number of souls, greater number than the first type. They are also legion throughout the entire world. They like to hear what God has to say. They like to hear what he has to say. They even believe it for a short time, but then they go right back to their vomit. They go right back to their iniquity. And these are of the devil and not of God. They are lying to themselves and to those about them. But then there is a third type, says St. Gregory the Great. And these are those that hear, but they don't hear everything. They hear what they want to hear, and they reject the rest. So that when they hear the word of God, they hear the things that they like to hear, but they don't want to hear everything God has to say. And as time progresses, they will hear less and less. And they will not hear because they are not of God. So they don't believe everything. They're like unto the Protestants who believe that Jesus Christ is God. They hear that. But they will not hear that he has established a church. They will not hear that they have to go to confession. They will not hear that they cannot stay, in, uh, that they cannot get married ten times and there cannot be divorced and so on. They will hear the part that they want to hear, but they will reject the rest. And there are many souls that hear little and then reject the remainder. And these are the ones that are primarily focused on in this last two weeks of Lent. For there are so many in the church of God. So many that go to church. So many that hear the truth. So many that believe many things Christ has to say, but they will not hear it in themselves. And then our Jesus Christ gives a test. He who, is, he who hears my voice shall never see death. Now we know that, asked the devil. Whoever hears my voice is never going to see death. He will never taste death. Well, Abraham, he, he died. And what did Christ say about Abraham? He said, Abraham, who lived 2,000 years before Christ was born, Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. We must remember that in this life, there was one great test. Who is going to hear God at the moment of truth? And the moment of truth is the moment that we are finally tested. It is the moment of the judgment. Not the judgment that comes after we die, but the judgment becomes that we which our judge our own selves and our final temptation and our final ask of that movement towards virtue. Are we going to be with God at that final moment or are we going to be with the devil? And as we live, so we die. Most souls live to he listen to part of what Jesus Christ has to say. They like part of it, but they don't like all of what he has to say. And this group is like unto Pilate. Pilate liked Christ. Pilate really wanted our Lord Jesus Christ not to be crucified. Pilate wanted good for Christ, but he didn't want to lose his job. He didn't want to be in an uncomfortable position. He didn't want to be thrown out. He didn't want to experience pain. He wanted to somehow please the Jews and also please Jesus Christ. He wanted everyone to be happy. He would end his days in suicide. There are many souls like that in the world today. And it is one of the chief deep causes of suicide. When you try to make everyone happy except God. And try to find a way of living peaceful in a non-peaceful world. And then St. Gregory also says, We seem to be in a time of peace. The persecution of Diocletian and the bloody persecution of our ancestors is finished. We seem to be in a time of peace, but know this, children, there are always occasions of valor. There will always be occasions of valor and strength. God will never allow his soldiers to live without an occasion of valor. There will be a time when you're going to have to stand up and fight. There will be a test. Remember that he gave a test to Adam even before the fall, and there will be tests, and he will ask, do we believe in the truth? With our whole being, with our whole mind, our whole soul, our whole heart, our whole being. Do we believe in the truth? Do we hear the word of God in every way? Here is one of the great attacks of Satan against the word of God in our times amongst Catholics. To get them to believe part of the sacred scripture, but not all. To believe part of the requirements of the gospel, but not all. To make exceptions for a good reason. That's what Pilate did. That's what's been done so many times in history. And these means that we no longer are the hearers of the word of God. And then what does our Lord say? He does not hear the word of God. He is of the devil. Who hears the word of God? He is of God. 
And so they do not hear the words of God because you are of the devil who is a liar. And remember, these lies are not only said to the others, they are said to ourselves. Hence, St. Gregory the Great says in his sermon today, Consider your heart very seriously. Consider the warning of God. Am I a hearer of the word of God? I think I am. I hope I am. But am I really a hearer of the word of God? Let there be an examination of the conscience. Let there be a deep examination. And to try to re eradicate all those elements and parts of my life where I am not hearing the word of God. There are times when we don't hear the word of God because of weakness. But there are very often, there are parts of our life where we refuse to hear the word of God. When we don't hear the word of God because of weakness, it's easy to see because we fall but we rise again. We fall but we rise again because it is only weakness. But when we do not hear the word of God because we reject it, we fall and we stay down. And we will not allow the word of God to enter into us in these areas. So many areas that we will not accept. Hence it is most important to fight against the heresies of the modern world. The heresy that says that God could have made this world evolve over millions of years. Why does that heresy exist? It only exists because that's what liars are saying today. No one cared about evolution 300 years ago. Because the liars weren't talking about evolution 300 years ago. They cared about different lies. It's just the lie of the moment. And if you don't accept that lie of the moment or compromise with that lie of the moment, then you will be rejected by the world. And therefore, we, we compromise with the lie of the moment. There have been lies in every single age. There will be lies until the ending of times. And the lies rotate. But they all come from the father of lies. And what he is striving to do is turn us not into those to weak souls, but those who are filled with viciousness of heart and pride. And their lies will be part of our blood. And the modern man thinks he's good. He is a liar. Modern man is wicked. There have been more murders, more abortions, more, more contraceptions, more, more, uh, more of every kind of sin, more abortions, more of lies. More of every kind of heresy. More of every wickedness that exists in the world since the beginning of time. It is more in our times, not less. And therefore we are not better than our ancestors. We're worse. But yet modern man, who is the worst, is, behaves in the worst manner that any man has ever behaved in the last 6,000 years of his history. He still believes he's good. And this also is worse. When a wicked man believes he's good, how can he repent? How can he convert? He believes his own lies. St. Gregory the Great says, the final punishment of the liar that God gives to the liar is that he believes his own lies. He becomes so immersed in lies that he begins to believe his own lies and he becomes almost impossible for him to repent. For he began by lying and know that he, knowing that he was lying. But as he continued to lie, he began to believe in his own lies. And the spirit of Satan fills over his soul so that he can only think as a liar. And he is a true child of Satan. If you hear the word of God, it must go inside the heart. That's why it's so important to have the sacrament of confession, the sacrament of penance, because not only does penance take away our sins, but it helps us to solve the deeper problem of becoming liars and being liars deep in our blood. We don't think we need confession. It is one of the most offensive things in the Catholic Church to those outside the church. I will not confess my sins to a man, what they say. Well, what about what God says? Do you hear the words of God? God said to the apostles on Easter Sunday, whose sins you shall re or forgive, they are forgiven them. Whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. He told his apostles to hear confessions, but they say, we don't want to hear, we don't want to listen to man. We don't go to confession because man told us to go to confession. We go to confession because God told us to go to confession. We hear the words of God. We do not consume the host knowing that it is the body and blood and soul and divinity because that's what we believe. We consume the host knowing that it is the body and blood and soul and divinity of Jesus Christ because that is what he said. And we hear his word. And we believe that what he says is true. And we make no exceptions to it. If he says, my, my body is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, we believe it. If he says that he created the world in six days, we believe it. If he said that the earth is the center of the universe and the world, and the sun goes about it in circuits, we believe it. 
And if he said that, that, that the Abraham had two sons, we believe it. And everything that he said, we believe. If we say that Abraham was born in the city of Ur of Chaldees, we believe that he was born in Ur of Chaldees. We believe every word that proceeded from the mouth of God contained in sacred scripture and sacred tradition, and we follow those words. We would rather die than disobey his words. So that the great Jews of the Old Testament, they were told, eat swine's flesh. There's nothing wrong with a pig. God created pigs. But they did not eat the swine's flesh. And they were put to death. And they were killed. Why? Because they heard the word of God. And God said, do not eat of the swine's flesh. But then St. Peter one day went to visit a Roman, Cornelius. And he was, he was serving ham that day. He was serving pork that day. And he said, I can't eat that. And an angel appeared to him and said, eat the swine's flesh. You eat it. And after the third time he heard the word, he realized God said to eat of the meat of the pig. And therefore he ate it. Why is it that they did not eat it in the Old Testament? And why is it that we do eat it in the New Testament? Because we hear the word of God. And we are the hearers of the word of God. We don't care what word he says. We hear his word. St. Alphonsus Liguri says, some men are called to be a priest. Some women are called to be sisters and nuns. Some men are called to be brothers and monks. They are called by the word of God. Now those who do not hear this word, they are in the most grave danger. They are in the most grave danger of losing everything they are, everything they have, and losing their own souls. Because we are the hearers of the word of God. That's what makes us Christians. The word Christian means a follower of Christ. How do we know to follow Christ? We listen to his word and to every word. And every one of us has a problem. Every one of us has a difficulty. Every one of us has something in our lives where we do not listen to the word of God. We need to eradicate this non-listening from our hearts and be hearers of the word of God. And how do we prove we're hearers of the word of God? By doing the works that we have heard. How can someone know that we have heard the word if we don't follow that word? It is known only by our actions. Fides ex auditu, says St. Paul. It comes by hearing, but it is proven by action. So let us be hearers of the word of God. That prove that we are hearers of the word of God by being doers also. And remember also our Lord Jesus Christ said, Will there be any faith left when I return? Of course there will be, but very few shall have that faith. Will there be any faith left when I return? So many will walk away. It will be as in the days of Noah. When God came down 100 years before the flood, he looked around the entire world and saw wickedness everywhere. When he went to the city of Sodom, he saw the wicked city of Sodom. Was every single man in the, in the city of Sodom a Sodomite? No, they weren't. Was every single man in the time of Noah a worshiper of Satan? Was the only church that existed at the time of Noah the church of Satan? Did everyone say they were heretics and didn't believe in God at the time of Noah? There were many, many sons of God. But the scripture tells us they intermarried with the daughters of men, and they went away from the faith. And Noah alone was found with grace before God. And 100 years later, things didn't get better. But guaranteed, in the time of Noah, before that great flood, when only eight human beings survived the flood, now the modern society of St. Pius X says, how do we describe the flood? Well, it didn't cover the whole world. God created the whole world, and when he says I'm going to destroy the world, he doesn't do things in parts. He does it in whole. He covered the whole world. And the scripture tells us 14 cubits over the highest mountain. He even gives us the exact height. 14 cubits. That's 21 feet over the highest mountain. That's how high the waters went in the entire world. But they don't believe that. And they say it was only an anthropological flood. So that only those people who lived on the earth lived in a nice little bowl, nice little valley somewhere, and no one moved out when there was a 40 days and 40 nights of flood. We're in a flood land here. When the water rises, we figure it's time to move. But somehow people didn't know it was time to move. And these are mockers of the word of God. They are not hearers of the word of God. And why do they say these words? It's quite simple. Because they're trying to get along with the world. And trying to get along with modern man. It's not a theological problem. It's not an intellectual problem. 
It's a problem of they don't love God. And they don't want to hear everything that comes to the mouth of God. They want to fit their own little God in their own little heart the way they only want God to be, which is a God that's comfortable, that fits with what the world has to say, and what the God has to say. Of, 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 of God that gets along with everyone. But God is God. And when he came down to Noah, he said, I will destroy human flesh. It repents me that I have made human flesh, but I will destroy it. And I will save all humanity only in Noah and those that are inside the ark. And I will also wipe out all the animals who were made to serve men, and therefore the animals shall also be wiped out. And so the animals were also wiped out, and only those that were with Noah were saved. And all the descendants of all the pigs in the world come from two pigs who were on the ark of Noah. Every horse in the world comes from two horses that were on the ark of Noah. And I know by a divine, infallible truth that every single deer and every single kangaroo and every single animal on the ark came on the world today. The trillions of them that are there. Every one of them has one grandpa and one grandma kangaroo and one grandpa and grandma elephant. And they were all there on that ark. And I know this with a certitude of faith. And I am ready to die for it. We should be ready to die for it. It doesn't make sense to modern man that, that the Jews of the old died rather than eating swine's flesh. Because it was more important to be the hearer of the word of God than to accept the wisdom of man. And when God changed his mind and says, eat pigs, you better not be a vegetarian. The fact is, we do what God says. We obey the word of God because God said, therefore we do. We are hearers of the word of God. And St. Saint, and Saint, Saint Gregory the Great says, no matter how perfect we think we are, look into your heart and you will find that there are many places in it where God is blocked out. There are many places where we don't hear the word of God. And let us make sure those places are eradicated and cleaned out that we may hear ask the grace by the help of the Holy Mother of the Church and our Holy Mother in Heaven, the Blessed Virgin Mary, through the mediators of all grace, to help us to hear the Word of God everywhere. And now in these last two weeks of Lent, it is time to examine our own consciences and our own hearts, to be in the sacrament of penance, to go to confession, and to be able to try to make real steps to strengthen our hearts for the, for the battle of Good Friday, that when that day comes, we can be with St. John and the Holy Women and the Blessed Virgin Mary at the foot of the cross. With our holy Lord, with our Lord. Good day, God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.